this is DIY Hi-Fi Life. In this video episode, I show you how to create your own media streamer for less than $150 today on DIY Hi-Fi Life. Firstly, I'd like to thank all the great subscribers I've gotten for my DIY Hi-Fi Life channel. The response has been truly amazing, and I do appreciate each and every one of you and the comments are very good and I'm getting some great feedback on some of you out there that have tried some of my suggestions and are having good results. Keep the feedback coming and I'll keep the videos coming. Today I'm going to explore, which may become an occasional series, um, some of the um, technology out there for creating your own uh, media streaming clients. Uh, a lot of this will be based on Raspberry Pi technology, and uh, but I want to dive a little into how to actually create uh, your own streaming media client. I've been doing streaming of my audio system for about 15 plus years now. And uh, 15 years ago, uh, the options were uh, a lot fewer and you had to do a bit more work to get things up and running. Things have really changed now here in 2021 where we have a, a preponderance of streaming uh, media of all types and it's really a, a amazing amount of things to choose from. So getting back to my original streaming uh, back uh, 15 years ago, I started out with something called the squeeze box, which I have here. Let me get it here. I have the original box, maybe a bit of a collector's item right now, but it looks like that. Some of you might have seen it. This is the original squeeze box three and really um, started this whole idea of uh, network streaming of audio. I remain amazed at how much the original Squeezebox team got right uh, in developing uh, this technology. Their, their products whoa, have uh, really lasted quite a long time and even through changes in ownership and management have uh, really stood the test of time and I, my hats are off to uh, the original Squeezebox um, developers. Um, and uh, it, it is still available and, and you can take advantage of it with the Logitech Media Server which is a open, quasi open and source um, product that you can freely download and implement on your uh, network for free. Still a very good product and I recommend it highly. Today though, I'd like to update, since things have changed quite a bit, a lot of the uh, media streaming uh, for DIY type enthusiasts have moved to the Raspberry Pi um, domain. That's the little system on a chip, SOC, that allows you to do amazing things without much uh, money uh, spent at all and in a very compact form factor. So combining that technology with uh, modern touch screens, you can, you can actually recreate the Squeezebox uh, client uh, with a uh, touch screen interface. Uh, as I said, I'd like to talk about over uh, maybe another few videos, different uh, distributions, as they're called, uh, um, distros in the vernacular of the Linux world uh, for um, use on Raspberry Pi, such as um, Pi Core Player, uh, Ropey, and there's a uh, Volumio. There's a whole bunch of, uh, of these out there. And so maybe it would be good to take a dive into each of those over time. Today, I want to look at one that I think it deserves a little extra um, scrutiny and review, and that has to be the uh, Hi-Fi Berry products. Uh, Hi-Fi Berry is a Switzerland-based company making what are known as uh, hats for the Raspberry Pi architecture. Uh, these are um, circuit boards that plug into a, a generic standardized um, pin configuration on the Raspberry Pi and give you new functionality. In this case, DAX, digital uh, analog converters. Um, again, there's many choices out there. I like what HiFairBerry is doing though because they've not uh, stopped just with making the hats but have embarked on creating what they call HiFairBerry OS. And it is very easy to take their uh, distro, uh, download it to a micro SD card, and then uh, boot it up on a Raspberry Pi with a Hi-Fi Berry DAC attached. And that forms the basis for creating a media streamer uh, that is very um, well thought out and uh, very useful. And what's also nice is this uh, also supports a touchscreen interface. So on today's video, I'm going to give you a video montage of actually assembling 
the uh, Hi-Fi Berry OS Raspberry Pi touchscreen device. And then I'll give you a, a quick overview of the Hi-Fi Berry OS and what it's capable of uh, today on DIY Hi-Fi Life. So let's take a look at the assembly first. First thing to do is install the uh, standard uh, Pi screen into the Smart 2 case, as you can see here. It's only one connection that you have to worry about is the um, ribbon cable from the display that will hook into the Raspberry Pi, as you'll see in a moment. So now we install the Raspberry Pi board into the back of the Smart 2 case. Uh, just a couple of screws to install that and then the uh, display will go into the display connector or ribbon cable there. Now we're installing the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus uh, board. This is the uh, with the SPDIF and uh, TOSLINK output. You could uh, do use any uh, Hi-Fi Berry board that you want to use. This one will allow me to connect it to an external DAC for playback. Putting a right angle connector just to make it easier to route cables from the back. We now see the startup screen for the Hi-Fi Berry OS on the display on the first boot up onto the uh, smart case and display. Browsing through the uh, music player settings and now I'm going to insert a uh, SD card for local music storage uh, playback. And now we're using the phone to connect to the uh, display using a Spotify connection, as you see there, and a DLNA. And that's it. When you first connect to the Hi-Fi Berry OS, you will see the opening screen that we see displayed here. And you can access all of the elements uh, remotely as you can with the touchscreen as well. Let's go into the uh, sound and you can see you have a few uh, options to choose from. If you're using the Hi-Fi Berry DSP modules, you would have more options uh, regarding uh, sound adjustments that you can get into with uh, room co compensation and uh, using their DSP interface. But today we're going to focus on just the streaming capabilities of the Hi-Fi Berry OS. Of course, we've got the sources uh, selection and we have a bunch of options to choose from. At the top is the music option and this allows you to stream or browse your albums either individually or by artists. Uh, Hi-Fi Barry OS does a pretty good job of downloading um, background art for items. You can click on an item here, and uh, if we go up here, let's see here, uh, click on this, you'll see all the uh, options. If we could click on the artists, we'll uh, see background art that's been downloaded, as you can see there. So it does a pretty good job. Uh, interestingly, when browsing from a remote connection, either via the... Uh, a web interface I've got here or through a phone with the browser. Uh, it's The interface is very uh, responsive, but oddly uh, on the touch screen itself, it's a little bit sluggish. So you'll probably want to do most of your interactions of the Hi-Fi Berry OS through a remote uh, using a uh, cell phone browser or a computer browser, for example. Um, you can also adjust where your music is um, searched for going into the general tab and you can go to the music player daemon and you'll see I have a USB drive attached and also I have my uh, remote NAS servers available uh, as well to uh, attach to. Going back to the sources, another option is the radio option and this uh, works for uh, internet radio. So I can type in something like jazz there, hit enter, and I'll be presented with a list of uh, jazz stations that I can select uh, from. So I can go ahead and uh, make a star, go back, and now that's added to my list of jazz radio stations that I can uh, listen to. And uh, when I do that, I go ahead and click on it. Uh, I will see uh, it will connect to the uh, streaming audio uh, 
radio station. And when I click on the uh, what's now playing, you'll see I'm uh, streaming from the Lynn Jazz uh, and playing uh, a title. And there the art comes in as well. So that's the uh, now playing feature. And uh, stop that and go back to the uh, sources. Uh, the next two items um, are DLNA and Open Home, uh, which are related to each other. DLNA is uh, the legacy uh, uh, pr protocol for streaming audio over a network. Uh, a little bit limited, but it can be useful. I would recommend the Miniman uh, server. It's a free server that you can install and download and put on a, a NAS or a computer and uh, use that. Um, Open Home apparently is an extension to DLNA in that it adds uh, support for gapless audio and also offloading of the uh, playback queue to the uh, streaming device, unlike DLNA. Uh, I recommend uh, Bubble UPnP on the Android platform as a controller. Works very well uh, with these devices. We now also have uh, Rune, which is my favorite and how I do most of my radio, audio, radio music streaming on my network today. And that works very well with the Hi-Fi Berry OS. We have AirPlay, of course, the Apple protocol, and then on Spotify Connect as well. And finally, I'll mention Squeeze Light, which is a support for the Logitech Media Server protocol, and uh, that can work as well. And Rune can work with Squeeze Light as well. So I think this is a very good selection. And um, the only things uh, you would maybe question is how to uh, use something like Tidal or um, Quobuzz. And again, if you're using the um, Bubble UNP uh, app, uh, Tidal and Quobuzz are available there, and you can cast them to uh, the Hi-Fi Berry OS using those, uh, that interface. So you're pretty much covered on no matter what service you're using or desire to use. And uh, basically, uh, the only other things to look at are the network uh, settings that you can do wired and wireless uh, setup. And um, we've gone over the... Um, settings for the uh, music daemon and uh, a few other uh, t t tools to um, make adjustments to the hi-fi berry os i think this is one of the cleanest most developed of the streaming os uh, that i've seen for raspberry pi and uh, i think it's a good place to start it's so easy to set up uh, basically you just burn the uh, image from the web onto a micro sd card uh, stick it in your uh, Raspberry Pi, and literally you're up and running in minutes. And uh, I think it works very well. So I think it's a good place to start if you're new to do, do it yourself, streaming uh, music uh, players, uh, and with the ni nice touchscreen interface, uh, that's a real nice bonus as well. So that, in a nutshell, is the Hi-Fi Berry OS for Raspberry Pi music streaming devices. So there you have it, a uh, DIY Hi-Fi Life streaming media player for less than 150 bucks with a touchscreen interface. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Hi-Fi Berry range of products and the Hi-Fi Berry OS. And uh, hopefully we'll look at some other um, streaming distros uh, uh, down the road as well in future videos. I do want to mention also that you should take a look at the uh, more information section down below where I've got links to everything that I talk about and also have links to various uh, free trials for music uh, services, uh, links to uh, the products I've mentioned, as well as a curated list of uh, music uh, that is free to download that you might enjoy and might uh, take you off in some new musical directions you hadn't thought about. And uh, I do appreciate uh, all the um, subscriptions and the likes if possible. And uh, please tell your friends about this channel if you think they'd be interested. And I'll try to keep uh, up my end of the bargain and uh, creating interesting videos for you to see. So once again, uh, this is Chris Barker for DIY Hi-Fi Life. Uh, see you later.